Hey yo, hey yo, hey, what is up? How's it going? How you doing? It's DJ Addy Longlegs, and I am so excited. We got a very, very special guest here in the studio today from the AIT down in Kaohsiung. That's the American Institute of Taiwan down in Kaohsiung. Uh, Neil Gibson, Neil, welcome to the show. Hello. Thank you, Addy. I am absolutely delighted to be here. Good. <laughs> I'm so stoked to have you, and I, I really do mean that uh, because I think. Uh, this is definitely a very interesting subject to be talking about, uh, especially this time of year for Americans. Uh, there's a certain uh, <laughs> certain election coming up. Uh, we might get into that a little bit later, but first off, let's just um, maybe give our listeners, uh, maybe some of us out there who don't really know exactly what the AIT sort of is and, and, and basically what it does here in Taiwan. Yeah, absolutely. So the American Institute in Taiwan, we actually have three um, offices. We have American Institute in Taiwan, one in Washington, we have one in Taipei, and then we have one in Kaohsiung. And so I'm down uh, at the team at uh, AIT Kaohsiung, and our work is focused on uh, supporting the unofficial relationship between the United States and Taiwan. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. So uh, maybe you could also give us just a little bit of background on uh, your personal story and kind of how uh, you, you got into uh, the field of diplomacy and what, what sort of got you here today. Yeah, no, the, so I grew up in, um, in California, but not the cool part. I grew up in the, in the Mojave Desert, and my dad was in mining. And so I grew up in a very small town. Um, it was a small school. There was only 39 in my graduating class, and it was the only school wow. for about 15 miles in any direction. And not very international, but this is the small world part. The um, There was a family in the town. They owned the uh, only Chinese food restaurant in town. And where, <laughs> yeah. where are they from? Where were they from? Uh, I'm going to guess Kaohsiung. Kaohsiung. <laughs> They were from Kaohsiung. <laughs> and so actually growing up, one of the first foreign languages I heard, and this is what they spoke in the restaurant, was Hakka and Taiyu. I mean, yeah. I didn't know what they were saying, but these were the first, this is what the languages they used in the restaurant wow. with their family. So you did have a little bit of early on exposure. Right, right from yeah. the beginning. Wow. Like the connection with Kaohsiung right there. That's amazing. And then, um, and so there I went to um, Fresno State um, and uh, majored in what anyone in diplomacy would normally go into. I went into agricultural business oh. and uh, in classical studies. Um, but and then, um, but it was there that actually my professor uh, shared a lot of one of my key professors there shared a lot about the foreign service, which I never heard of before, and even this career track opened up my eyes. And then I have career attention deficit disorder, and so <laughs> in between all of this, I mean, I was working on a ranch. I did an internship at Governor Schwarzenegger's office. I oh wow! Worked yeah. in a, an animal feed store. Um, the list goes on. I worked in uh, mainland China as a uh, English teacher. Um, and But then somehow in 2009, the Department of State let me in and I never planned to leave because this is just an absolutely awesome job. Like working with, uh, it's everywhere you go, um, new people, new opportunities, new cultures, new food. It's just, uh, and, and do like honestly meaningful work. Meaningful stuff. Absolutely. I, I think uh, uh, it's certainly... Uh, a blessing to in your in your professional life be able to to do something that allows you to connect to so many people meaningfully. Uh, it's maybe maybe not every job that that has has that element uh, so strongly as it seems like yours does. So that's awesome. Absolutely, and because you move every in our career every th about every three years on average. There's no and I said mentioned the att uh, career attention deficit disorder. Mm, there's mm, no way to get bored. Right, you cannot get right. bored in this lifestyle, and uh, yeah, pretty darn cool. That's awesome. Well, it's just a boy, That's right. <laughs> it's not going to be boring. Um, so, getting into a little more detail about the the Kaohsiung branch yeah. of the AIT, uh, AIT, excuse me. You are the branch chief. So, uh, specifically, what does that in, in, entail? You know, what do you do around the office down there? Uh, your role, and then maybe you could also share a little bit more about the the specific role of of the organization down south. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So, so our team and AIT Kaohsiung, we cover about the lower, a little more than one third of the island. So right, everything right. from Jai south to Kaohsiung, we also includes Penghu mm. and also includes Taidong. So I may be a little bit biased, but I think honestly, this is the most beautiful part yeah, of Taiwan. I mean, hey, it's come on. absolutely incredible Taidong, experience down yeah, oh there. Yeah, oh yeah. Um, and so, and then we, uh, our job and our focus down there is we engage with our partners on issues involving trade, investment, security cooperation, education, cultural exchange opportunities. And, um, and actually, since so I talk about cultural opportunities, I'd like to welcome your listeners to visit any one of AIT's 
uh, American Corners and American Shelves, which are free resources and event spaces and libraries all around Taiwan. So in the south, we actually have locations in Kaohsiung, in Pingdong, in Tainan, and in Penghu. And um, so actually, it's really great just a resource if uh, folks are interested. And then finally, we what we really do, though, is we coordinate closely with our head office here in Taipei. Mm -hmm. And um, as Director Green has, uh, he stated at his press conference last week, we're really focused at AIT on three different objectives right now. Okay. It's on resilience, security, and connectivity. And so on that resilience point, so when we're talking about that, we're talking about uh, you know, so how... Resilient societies can withstand the pressures imposed by threats ranging from climate change to natural disasters to global pandemics to geopolitical risk. Because so it's a very, very broad, but it's incredibly important work. Right, right. And then on the security side, Taiwan and the United States, we have a shared and abiding interest in peace and stability across the Taiwan Strait. And the United States remains committed to supporting Taiwan's ability to defend itself uh, in line with the Taiwan Relations Act and to strengthen Taiwan's role as a regional partner. And then finally, that last piece, that last pillar, connectivity, this is an area where we're engaged on everything from supporting Taiwan to get engage, to support Taiwan's engagement internationally in multilateral right, fora, right. Um, but also like we're working on deepening the economic and trade relationships between the United States, those connections, the economic connections. And then finally, it's the people-to-people -people connections. Yeah. Um, and that's where we're working on areas that uh, really trying to expand our education and cultural exchange programs. So our work on these three island-wide issues. Um, we're focused on this, but we're also focused on what I like to say is the superpowers in the South, um, which is those unique opportunities where we can strengthen the U.S. and Taiwan partnership. So, for example, um, there's actually a ministry uh, in Taiwan that's based in southern Taiwan. It's called uh, the Ocean Affairs Council. Mm. And so working with them on everything from maritime security to environmental issues. Um, and next month, we're actually partnering with the Ocean Affairs Council, with the Kaohsiung um, City government, uh, Japan, Australia, and other partners. Um, we're going to be bringing together international experts to talk about climate change in the oceans. And then in Kaohsiung, as many of your listeners know, is also the major port city. Yes. The largest yeah. port in Taiwan. Right. And so we actually have officers from U.S. Customs and Border Protection um, that are there working to identify and inspect containers to ensure that there's nothing dangerous or illegal that's getting shipped through Taiwan and partnering with Taiwan in that. And then finally, one of our most important duties is supporting U.S. citizens living in southern Taiwan. So we actually have a full operation down there supporting American citizens that are visiting or living with passports, uh, supporting uh, birth certificates uh, for their children or other services. Um, and then, actually, and I said finally, I have one more finally. <laughs> I'm proud of the fact that we actually were engaging beyond those big cities. So it's like, um, so we're working. One of the uh, jobs that I just love doing is actually engaging with leaders from indigenous communities. Yes. A majority of okay. Taiwan's tribes, of the si uh, 16 recognized tribes, are actually based in southern Taiwan. Right, right. And so it's an opportunity to understand those unique issues and then connect them with indigenous communities in the United States. Um, and then also going out to remote and underserved areas and looking for opportunities to exchange um, and work with them on educational programs. So it's a, uh, anyway, it's, I just, I knew you, uh, yeah, it was a lot to say, but there's just a lot that we're doing. <laughs> And it's actually really yeah. exciting to be down there right now. I mean, yeah, I, you know, you, you re already answered this. I was going to kind of, you know, see if we could get into some of the differences between um, what the uh, northern branch, the Taipei AIT does. But you've already mentioned so many things um, that are that are going on specifically down there in the south of Taiwan. Uh, I think that's so cool. You, you mentioned uh, really making an effort to to branch out away just from the, the urban areas, you know, out of Kaohsiung City proper um, and, and, and getting uh, specifically to go to visit some indigenous indigenous communities and and plug in with them uh i think that's so important and and so worthwhile you know really uh getting down to the the personal interpersonal level of of cultural language exchange and all of that um as as part of a bigger broader mission you know to to go beyond just the interpersonal one-on-one -on -one connections and uh bring bring the global community together yes so absolutely absolutely that's that's all just absolutely uh as we as we've already said so meaningful face Really, really, I, I do think. <laughs> um, so maybe I could ask you this. Yeah. Um, 
you mentioned uh, kind of this 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 sort of three year time period for yourself where yeah. you're shuffled around. Uh, when do you find out about what the next one yeah. is? Is it like, hey, you got a weekend, and then we're sending you out somewhere <laughs> right. else? Get your bags you packed. Pack and, those bags. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> we're uh, for the Department of State. We actually so about a year before our term is set to end, uh, we end up getting a list of okay, these are at your rank the different job opportunities okay. around the world okay. in our different missions, and so and it's you're you're applying and you're you're doing interviews and sending resumes and talking with our, our different uh, missions around the world. Um, and so you usually end up knowing maybe about eight months in advance of where uh, where your next place is going to be. And so for me, like I've, um, I've had a chance. So I've worked in the Philippines and Manila. I've worked in Taipei uh, uh, about 12 years ago. Um, worked in Tokyo, Baghdad, um, Paris at the um, at an international organization there, and then now a little bit of a homecoming, like living the dream back in Gaoshan. <laughs> yeah, wow! Talk about a world tour, and not over yet. You know, the, the future could bring some really exciting things too. But absolutely, very happy you're here now. It's 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 puts puts my uh, puts my mind at ease <laughs> knowing <laughs> that someone someone like yourself is uh, really out there on the front lines, giving giving themselves to uh, such such important important causes. Um, you just mentioned so many different things uh, that uh, the AIT down in Kaohsiung and, and, and really all of southern Taiwan, uh, all the stuff they're doing. Maybe you could highlight just real quick one or two kind of recent projects that you've specifically felt personally connected to or you're specifically proud of of the organization down there. Anything jump out at you? Any highlights? Yes, absolutely. So actually, the I mean, one thing that I'm, we're particularly excited about and we're focused on is, I mean, to think about the future generations of this relationship. And, of, and so one thing is that we're focused on is exchange programs to help Taiwan people improve their English and then help Americans learn Mandarin. Yeah, and, and let's go. Incredibly let's go. Really important because it's, it's, this gets, this is the root. This is the bedrock of our relationship and these ties. And then also it's facilitating academic and um, uh, research partnerships between students and teachers in the United States and Taiwan. Okay. Yeah. So I was actually, it was maybe three weeks ago. I had a chance to sign um, with uh, one of the universities in Southern Taiwan. There are four American universities that came in and we signed MOUs to help kind of find what uh, ways to, uh, to bolster or those uh, relationships. Yeah, built but up that's just some a piece relation. of it. Yeah, it's just yeah, a piece yeah. of it. And there's a lot more that, that that's happening. And then, I mean, but there's also more that's going on, for example, on music, the art, sports, technology, entrepreneurship. And so, I mean, the best way to see kind of some of the ways that we're, what we're doing is I encourage your, your viewers to take a look, our viewers, your listeners, to look at our AIT Facebook, our Instagram accounts, because um, we are uh, constantly sharing basically what's coming up, but also mm, um, mm, mm. and encouraging folks to get involved. And so, and I want to mention one specific cultural program I'm actually really, really excited about. It's in October um, and we're partnering with a Taiwan dance troupe to sponsor the Islander Inclusive Festival at uh, Tai Kong Cultural Center in Tainan. And what's really special about this program is that we've invited an American dancer to Taiwan named Karina Ho. And Karina, she was paralyzed below the chest following a car accident. Oh, my goodness. But, yeah. but since she's become an incredibly accomplished dancer and activist for disability rights. Yeah. And so she's going to give workshops and performances together with Taiwan's resident island dance theater. I don't know if you heard of them before, but it's a dance troupe in Taiwan that features dancers and choreographers who have disabilities. Wow. And so your listeners, they can take part in dance workshops or just come to check out the art exhibit. We have performances. There's a market featuring handicrafts made by people with disabilities. And so I'll repeat again a little bit of a commercial, the Island Inclusive Festival at Taikong Cultural Center. It's in Tainan, and it's help, happening from October 19th through 27th. But the main performances and markets are scheduled for uh, Saturday, October 26th, and Sunday, October 27th. Awesome. Coming up the end of next month. And uh, as you mentioned, uh, listeners, if they, if they maybe if they forget where they, they, they can get that information on your, your Instagram. Instagram, that's right. Facebook. The socials, the, the Facebook. The socials, check out the interwebs. AIT on the old world. World Wide Web. That's right. <laughs> uh, we're just about out of time, but real quick before we go, I, I think might be a good time to just kind of give a, a quick shout out and a reminder since we are here with uh, you know the American Institute in Taiwan. Uh, big election coming up, and I know that the AIT uh, helps to provide services to make that whole process of of, of American uh, whether they're living here or if they're just visiting get that voting abroad going. You want to just give a quick shout out to how how 
how y'all can help with that process? Absolutely. Thank you for asking this. So, um, so first of all, um, incredibly important. Every American has the right to vote, and they can vote overseas. You can do it overseas, and, it, and it's and it's actually quite easy. I did it myself. I've done it um, before. Yeah, and it's um, and so uh, the website that uh, we encourage uh, all American citizen uh, your listeners to go to is. And make sure I get this right, F-V-A-P dot uh, gov. Gov. Uh, and so it's the, and basically this is a um, website you can go to and it will just walk, depending what state that you're a resident of, it'll walk you through the process and help you register. And uh, we strongly encourage everyone, please, please, please vote, vote, vote. It's your, it's your right. And you're, and it's important that you, uh, make your, sure your voice is heard. Absolutely. No excuse. If you're living abroad, you can still do it. And, and there's these systems set up to make that go as smooth as possible. One more time. Let's make sure I get this right. You said it was fvap.gov. I'm hoping that's right. <laughs> as, I'm, as, you, as you see me uh, looking at my phone and uh, opening up the website uh, really quick to make sure that is correct. But, uh, um, uh, but yes, uh, but this is a, but uh, it's a, and it, there's actually one men one of many sites that will help you to register to vote. Cool. Well, get it done, everybody out there listening. If you are an American citizen, you can do it, and AIT can make it just that little bit easier for you. Okay, thank you so much again, Mr. Neil Gibson. Thanks for coming on and thank sharing you. all this cool stuff. Last, last thing before you go. Uh, what sort of Taiwanese dish that you've had here would yeah. you want to share with the world? Be like, hey, come on, you got you to try this. So I know this is going to be incredibly unconventional, but but I um, actually, it's a stinky tofu. Oh. Oh, yeah. I, I like stinky tofu, and so and it, honestly, like if you're okay with fermenting milk to make cheese, then it's really the same principle. You're fermenting uh, soybeans to make this tofu. Totally. And it's um. Do you go I, fried? I, fr- I actually fry it, steam it, steamed. But, but okay, the issue okay. too is like like and people oh the smell, but honestly, like I was in France for three years, the cheeses I smelled there yeah, are much stronger on. than come this on. tofu, and it's great. It's great. <laughs> I'll take it. I'm a big fan of stinky tofu myself. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks again, Neil. We got to go, but I really do appreciate you coming on the show today and sharing all this good stuff. Thank you for having me. Again, yeah. Absolutely. Just uh, thank you for this time. Good luck on all your future endeavors, uh, both down there uh, at the AIT down in Kaohsiung and wherever, uh, wherever the future takes you. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Cheers.